Health of the Nazis means blind obedience, based on regimentation, propaganda, and ultimately on coercion and fear. This report examines some of the methods the Nazis used to control morale. Allied bombings have had a tremendous impact on German morale. In destroying factories, we directly affect the worker on the German home front. Indirectly, the lives of all civilians are affected. The attacks have left millions homeless. Crude shelters are the only new dwellings available. Families have lost everything they own. Forced evacuation has torn children from parents, husbands from wives. Round-the-clock bombing has kept civilians under a constant strain. Interrupted food and water supply. Breakdowns in gas and electrical services. Difficulties in transportation. Air raid victims are easy prey for defeatism. Aware of this, the Nazi party has put itself in direct charge of all air raid precautions. Field Marshal Goering is responsible for all defense measures. The plane reporting system, the fighter squadrons, and the anti-aircraft batteries. When our bombers approach, it's these agencies that first go into action. American airmen are shown in the worst possible light and described as air gangsters. Some German fighters arrive back at their fields with the victory roll flourish. The Nazi propagandists give plenty of space to the battle descriptions of their arrogant air heroes. Ja, wie war nun der Augenblick, als Sie zum ersten Mal diesen Amerikaner voll gesehen haben? In 6000 Meter lag, sahen wir gleich vor uns 80 bis 120 Amerikaner. Ich flog, wir flogen dann von vorne an. Ich hatte gerade den Rechtsaußen fliegen und vor mir setz, äh, nahm ihn aufs Ziel und kurz vorher, bevor wir uns rammten, habe ich auf sämtliche Knöpfe gedrückt und ihm die ganze Kanze voll geschossen. Dann zogen wir durch und die Amerikaner schossen wie wild hinter uns her. Beim Wegziehen sah ich dann noch, wie der Amerikaner aus dem Verband raus schob und dann im Stoffflug in den Boden runterstürzte. Und dann sind wir durch den Verband durchgebraust. In terms of morale, Goering's defenses keep the German people from feeling helpless and unprotected. Goering is also responsible for some of the reconstruction work, such as repairing bombed out factories. However, most of the post-raid functions fall under Himmler who, like Goering, is responsible only to the Nazi party. As Minister of the Interior, Himmler directs the police and the public welfare agencies for feeding and clothing bombed out civilians. Himmler also controls the various other civilian defense organizations, most important of which are the several agencies for fighting fire. Under Himmler, the civil defense system has functioned efficiently. Goebbels has impressed on the people that they are getting all the help possible. 
Furthermore, since what help they do get comes from the Nazis, they're grateful to the party. For those not so grateful, the Nazis have a cure. Under Himmler are also the SS and the SA men, the secret police and strong arm squads who infiltrate the entire system. Watchful, ruthless, deadly. They patrol the scene of every bombing, ready to stamp out the first sign of organized protest. Troublemakers simply disappear. Reporting the bad news from the fighting fronts is another serious problem for the Nazis. How they've handled this threat to morale can best be shown in a specific example. This was the Russian position in July 1943, and the Russians launched one of the greatest sustained offensives in military history. For eight months, well into 1944, the German army was beaten back. The Russians cost the Nazi war machine five and one half million men, 21,000 planes. German tanks, trucks, and guns are strewn by the tens of thousands across the vast stretches of the Eastern Front. How did Goebbels report this disaster? Here's a typical Nazi newsreel which has been translated and analyzed by our military experts. The commentator says, despite the aerial terror attacks, the people of Berlin relax. Special entertainment is staged for the wounded and for soldiers on leave. The theme of European solidarity is emphasized, as the commentator states, volunteer brigades from all parts of Europe mobilized to fight the Bolshevik menace. The commentary, on the Eastern Front in the northern sector of the new front line, our troops are hindered by mud and bad weather. Despite all obstacles, the Luftwaffe is active. Thus, setbacks are blamed on the weather. Sympathy and pride in the Army's perseverance are created. Engineers at Nikolayev, he says, destroy everything of value as our troops retire to prepare positions. In the South Central sector, the commentator says, our artillery and panzer units launch an irresistible counterattack. The Russians surrender. Thus the retreat is hidden in the showing of a successful operation. As 
the Russian advance can no longer be concealed, the major theme is being pounded into the population. Keep the Russians out of Germany. This is Goebbels' shrewdest argument, to exploit the Germans' fear of the consequences of defeat. So far, propaganda, regimentation and fear have kept the German home front under control. What about troop morale? Here is the latest German film on the Battle of France. doubt about it. The battle is tough. And yet the Germans who fight us have been at war five years. They have suffered defeat after defeat. By normal standards, they should be ready to give up. Why don't they? The answer is that most of the Germans are good professional soldiers hardened veterans. They've grown used to the risks and setbacks of war and proved skillful defensive fighters. The confidence of many soldiers is bolstered by the quality of their weapons. They have good small arms. Their heavy equipment is excellent. Their artillery ranges from highly mobile field pieces the old railroad guns. Their mobile rocket launchers are extremely effective. New weapons are exploited to the utmost for purposes of morale. An example is this monster the ME-323 transport plane. Its warehouse-like interior can hold a tank or truck. It can carry 150 fully equipped troops. Here's another Nazi notion, the doodlebug tank. It caused us little trouble. But its surprise introduction was widely publicized on the German army. On the other hand, the robot bomb B-1 has been devastating. This one missed, but thousands like it have smashed nearly a million dwellings in London alone. And Goebbels boasts that a new V-2 bomb will be ten times more powerful. Many German soldiers believe that promised secret weapons will turn the tide and bring victory. At this time of crisis, the Nazi high command has done everything possible to sustain troop morale. At the expense of the conquered peoples, German soldiers have been well fed, well clothed, and have received excellent medical care. The officers make a point of comradeship with enlisted men. Prisoners we have taken provide the best yardstick for measuring troop morale. Prisoners are interviewed. The interviews are analyzed. And a check is maintained on the trends of German morale. A cross-section shows that a small percentage is out and out defeatist. Some are discouraged and indifferent. The majority, however, still fanatically believe in the Fuhrer. Even capture cannot shake the arrogant faith in the Nazi creed that's been bred in them from childhood. Most important, the overwhelming number of soldiers see no alternative but to keep on fighting. For Hitler and his accomplices have taken over direct control of the army. 
Opponents to their fanatic policies have been purged. Trapped by the armies of the United Nations, these bankrupt leaders have no escape. Desperate, they're trying to postpone their fate by throwing the German army into futile battles. They plan to fight this war to the last German. They're willing to sacrifice a division if it will delay their trial even for a day. To enforce this policy of wanton destruction, they have a personal army of trained murderers, the SS. The blind loyalty of these men has been bought by a special privilege. They've been taught fabulous lies about their own racial superiority. In the name of the Fuhrer, they indulge themselves in every form of brutality and sadism. Appropriately, they are led by Heinrich Himmler, the depraved torturer the man who has made a science of mass murder. Responsible only to Hitler, these quarter of a million SS men have fortified German cities against their own inhabitants. SS units have been placed in key spots on all fronts. In case of revolt, they are prepared to fight the regular army. They have their own air force, their own Panzer. They operate their own transport and communication systems. They form a brutally efficient weapon against revolt, a police army unprecedented in the history of nations. There is no shortcut to unconditional surrender. The German position is desperate. Now is the time for the knockout blow. It's a tough and bloody job. But to falter now, either on the battlefield or in the factory, means to endanger the sweat and suffering we have already poured into the war effort. We are marching on the road to victory. We must not stop marching until every enemy of free men is trampled underfoot. <laughs> 